Welcome everybody to the 40 Finance Channel. My name is Jeff Beers. Today I'm going to compare two of the up and coming sports gambling stocks on the market, DraftKings and Penn National Gaming. We're going to take a look at both stocks and try to figure out which one is the best deal. Reminder as always that my stock picks and projections are my opinion only. Please talk to a financial professional before making any investments in the stock market. However, if you do like stock market analysis and personal finance videos, then make sure to subscribe to the 40 Finance channel. Thank you to everybody who's subscribed so far. Okay, so both DraftKings and Penn National Gaming have made big headlines this year. DraftKings, of course, with their IPO, Penn National Gaming with their acquisition of Barstool Sports, and with that acquisition, you might have seen a guy, Dave Portnoy, who's been a long time part of Barstool. And funny enough, with the disappearance of sports, Portnoy's been um, a big player in the stock market. He's got a lot of funny videos about investing and uh, quick turns that he's made in the market for massive profits. So uh, it's definitely worth checking out. But one of his big boasts in, in terms of Penn National Gaming was that uh, Penn National Gaming stock should be worth more than DraftKings stock, significantly more as a matter of fact. He says three times as much. So we're gonna take uh, that statement to heart and I also wanna disclose that I'm a DraftKings shareholder, not a Penn National Gaming shareholder. So I'll kinda share with you my perspective versus some of the things that Portnoy's come out and said. Uh, so let's compare these two. All right, taking a look at the DraftKings stock fundamentals, we see that they have a stock price today of 37.55. You can see a year-to-date chart off to the right-hand side. However, they were one of those new SPAC stocks, the special purpose acquisition company. Uh, and so their IPO didn't actually come into play, I don't believe until late April. Uh, I don't remember the exact date, but somewhere in the spring. And ever since then, it's shot up pretty far. In fact, all the way up to $44.00 and has settled down a little bit since then, but hovering in and around 35 to 37 right now. And that's given it a market cap of $13.28 billion right off of the bat. We have no PE ratio for DraftKings. They have not generated a profit yet. Uh, most people think profitability is going to take two to three years. So some of these other metrics like EPS, dividends and whatever, just uh, they don't come into play right now. All right, now let's compare Penn National Gaming. Similar stock price to a degree, 34.78. And you see their year-to-date chart, which is more representative because they have been, uh, you know, ticker symbol Penn for longer than DraftKings. And you see in that year-to-date, they've hit as high as $40, went down with the pandemic, and have since bounced back up. Market cap roughly one third the size of DraftKings at 4.7 billion. EPS at minus 5.25. No PE ratio right now. Similar situation to DraftKings in that it could be a year or two. They got really pushed back though on Penn uh, because they have physical locations. So a lot of what you see with MGM, Las Vegas Sands, all these tourists and travel stocks, uh, Penn has, has national locations. That's a big part of their play. And right now they're sort of holding the bag on those. They have been open, but of course traffic um, in those parts are not nearly what they were seeing uh, prior to COVID. All right, so on this chart, let's stack them up next to each other. We got Penn on the left, DraftKings on the right, revenue over the tra uh, trailing 12 months. We have Penn at 5.13 billion, DraftKings only 323 million. Scroll down a little bit to total cash on hand of 730 million for Penn, 157,000 for DraftKings. Debt on the Penn side, almost $12 billion. No debt for DraftKings. And so bottom line here, if you're just gonna go on stock fundamentals today and sort of disregard the future, 
Uh, I would say that Penn is at least making a significant amount of money. Now they're not profitable yet and they have a negative EPS uh, and they have $12 billion of debt, which that shouldn't be overlooked either. But they're certainly beating DraftKings from a revenue standpoint and that comes mostly from their physical locations, right? And so while these numbers are wildly different on paper and you would expect sort of a different outcome in stock price when you stack it next to each other, you have to keep in mind that DraftKings is almost a pure play sports betting, uh, mobile betting type platform and we're pitting, pitting them here with Penn uh, who also mostly operates physical locations. In fact, I don't even know how much sports betting uh, makes up their revenue streams. All right, so now I'm gonna take a look at DraftKings a little bit closer, tell you that as a shareholder uh, and somebody who's gonna to continue to buy DraftKings stock, here's the reason why I like them. And I can tell you reason number one is I've been a daily fantasy player for a long time, uh, four or five years now. So the daily fantasy is similar to what you would figure with your average fantasy football, except you're only playing games for that day or that week, right? So it's just like week one of football. You put in a certain lineup, you also pay a um, submission fee or a ticket fee for each entry, you go against thousands and thousands of other people, and, and those ticket fees get drawn together. Um, and so you can have the opportunity, depending on what game you're playing, to uh, make a lot of money playing daily fantasy. Now, I do not play professionally by any stretch of the imagination, uh, but in my you know past couple years, I've had a lot of success in the sense that I've won you know 10 to 20 percent of my money playing across multiple sports, football, I do, I like the NBA, uh, Major League Baseball just came back a couple days ago, uh, and I've started to get into that a little bit, while the MLB is, or excuse me, while the NBA and NHL are still getting themselves on the ground. So I'm super familiar with DraftKings, and that is one reason that I'm investing in them, even though here in Ohio, we do not have access to their sports, uh, to their sports book on the app, I've been to Indiana, a neighboring state which does, and I gotta tell you, it's pretty slick, and I'm looking very much forward uh, to Ohio having sports gambling whenever that legislation gets through. Uh, most people think it'll be 2021. But here's where DraftKings is looking to differentiate themselves against everybody else. And you'll notice right off the bat, it really has nothing to do with physical locations, right? Uh, they're, they're talking almost everything about their mobile sports gaming capacity. You see that they talk about their app and desktop, data-driven, security, authentic sports experience. And that is actually a big part of the game because you probably noticed that DraftKings is the sole um, representative for the NFL out of all the sports books in Daily Fantasy. Uh, they have sponsorships, direct sponsorships with teams. So they're really trying to get access to those media rights, if you will, of these different platforms so that they can have pictures of the NFL Shield and LeBron James and all these things. It makes a difference when you're playing on the app. Off to the right, you see their acquisition of SB Tech. Uh, SB Tech is a sports betting platform and DraftKings uh, purchased that company basically to help them uh, run their online sports book better, not to mention to have data-driven games that not only engage customers, but kind of encourage them to spend more, if you will, or play more. And then at the end of the day, they also get access uh, to SB Tech's user base, which kind of folds into DraftKings. And at the bottom there, finally, they talk about the player platform, you know, multiple secure payment methods, makes a big difference, guys. Uh, how you put money in and how you take money out of a sports gambling app makes a big difference. I can tell you that DraftKings makes it very easy. 
Other ones make it very hard. User information and loyalty and cross-sell, that's another big asset for DraftKings because they have so many people uh, who play daily fantasy across multiple sports. If you're gonna start off a company this way, uh, a lot of the customer acquisition fees that they paid back when they were just doing DFS, that kind of stuff begins to pay off here as sports betting uh, sort of takes off. All right, on the flip side of the coin, I pulled this slide from Penn National Gaming's Investor Report, and it's very interesting um, to see sort of their perception here because they basically come out and say, right at the top left, how does Penn compete? FanDuel DraftKings are leading because of their well-known sports brand, large database of users, quality user interface. And to compete, Barstool, Penn and Barstool must have a widely recognized sports brand, media integration with a large audience, best in class product, which in parentheses they say, currently under development. So their sports gaming app sounds like that it's being developed now and it's going to have a lot of pressure on it to be at least as good as FanDuel DraftKings so that they can uh, try to compete with these folks. Now the chart off to the far right, that's just New Jersey sports betting. That market is under a microscope right now because it's one of the first ones to come out and basically offer in-person gaming, mobile app gaming, and you actually have some comp data in there too uh, as it went live much earlier than other markets. You can see on here that FanDuel uh, leads the market at 44%. You can access FanDuel um, in the stock market, but it is under, I believe, a European brand. DraftKings there in second place at 26%. And it's just really interesting as you go down the line, um, you don't see Penn Barstool anywhere yet. But the big thing that I will give uh, Penn National Gaming is just the fact that, hey, they, they have put their target on what DraftKings is doing. So they've obviously identified that there's some great wins to be had, not only in sports gambling, but on the way that DraftKings and FanDuel have executed their approach to this market. So while I think that they are behind, and I'm not really sure that Barstool Sports uh, is gonna be the thing that puts them over the top, I think it's worth a try, and you gotta give it to Penn um, for going out and acquiring a well-known sports media company like Barstool and say like, hey, we're gonna do this differently. We're gonna play this game different than uh, MGM's gonna play this game. We're gonna make it our own way. So I really love that competitive spirit and the way that they're trying to take on uh, the competition in advance by investing and understanding that they have to reach a lot of people and Barstool has certainly uh, delivered a lot of eyeballs over the years. All right, taking a look at the tip ranks dashboard to see what the top performing analysts are saying about both of these stocks. Uh, I use tip ranks all the time. My affiliate link is in the description. If you're interested in learning more or supporting the channel, please check that out. On the DraftKings side though, right now we have nine buys, no holds, no sells, median price target of $47.86. That's up 27% from where we sit today. Most of these tip ranks analysts are looking about 12 months out, so it's a one year price target. You got a high bar of 60 and a low bar of 25 for DraftKings. All right, on the Penn National Gaming side, we have five buys, one hold, one sell, and a medium price target of 36.71. So that is 5.5% up from where we are today. You got a high bar of 47 and a low bar of 22. So from a stock perspective and a price target perspective, you know, both of these stocks are really, really close to each other. Uh, so at the end of the day, you have to think to yourself, what is your bull thesis for each one and which one do you believe in more? All right, so when you're thinking about bull thesis and which one you're gonna pick, I say place your bets. 
right? So we've, we've got two uh, competitors who have aspirations for the sports gaming market. Both are working overtime uh, to deliver results. It's probably going to be a two to three year play for both of them before they start seeing massive returns. So this could be the time to get in. Um, you know, ask yourself when before you're investing, you know, do you believe in barstool branding for Penn National Gaming to get them over the top? Does that barstool brand, which is obviously very popular uh, in the sports community, does that brand help push them over uh, the top? Or does the DraftKings brand and familiarity with use of DraftKings, uh, are you siding with that branding approach instead? Number two, it's uh, important to note that if you went on basic stock fundamentals, and you know, Penn is driving a lot more revenue right now, okay? $5 billion in revenue over the past 12 months, really tough time with the pandemic. Uh, you know, that debt load of 12 billion is not going to go down too much anytime soon. Uh, but they are delivering money. They do have physical locations. When COVID goes away, things start to progress very nicely for Penn. Number four, I think with both these guys, you have to think about the mobile sports gaming market. Who do you think can win there between these two? Personally, I believe DraftKings has um, a massive edge in that department as someone who has used their platform numerous times. But keep uh, your eye across this whole sports gaming industry. Mobile betting is the thing. Who do you think is going to win it? On the flip side of that, you have retail or physical uh, gaming, uh, sports books, going, hanging out at the casino, watching the games as more and more states become legal. You know, where do you put that, um, that game in terms of profitability? Penn has massive exposure to that. DraftKings has some, it's mostly like co-branded casinos, but do you see Penn's physical casinos as an asset or a liability? Certainly this year, it's become a monster liability because of how much it costs to lease these spaces, but in the future, do you see folks going back that way? Um, and how quickly does it happen? Could they possibly make up for DraftKings potential mobile domination by doubling down on their physical locations? These are definitely important questions if you're gonna invest in Penn. Finally, uh, just to sort of summarize, you know, my bet is on DraftKings far and away. I'm not interested in Penn right now. I like what Penn's doing. I like that they're not sitting on the sidelines, you know, waiting to just offer the same thing to the same people and expect to drive more money. They're going out to make changes uh, with the Barstool acquisition. So massive kudos to them for actually fighting and clawing to grow. Uh, between these two stocks though, I'm all in on DraftKings. Um, I believe my cost basis right now sits at about $34. Uh, I will likely be adding more. Hopefully if uh, the market takes a dip or two before the NFL season starts. Uh, the NFL is everything for both of these companies. If the NFL does not play, uh, both of these companies get hit hard um, from a share price, just from overall sentiment. However, the NFL will return one day, absolutely for sure. Uh, in the short term, all you can do is follow these stocks if you want to invest in them. Try to pick down days, red days, you know, try to shave three to five percent off. They're both pretty volatile, so you just have to wait for the right day to kick them when they're down, so to speak, and, and grab some shares. Build your cost basis that way. That's what I'm doing. All right, guys, so there you have it. Penn Gaming versus DraftKings stock comparison 2020. Let me know what you think in the comments and please give me a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Thanks.